Hi there, guys. This is 15F. This is minimum spanning trees. There are two algorithms to learn here, and one of the algorithm needs to be applied. Algorithms needs to be applied to both graphs and tables. The other one only needs to be applied to graphs. Okay, well, what is a spanning tree? A spanning tree is basically a network connect which connects all of the vertices, but which does not have cycles. Cycles, for example, are A, B, D, G, H, and A. It's just a loop which starts and finishes at the same place within your, within your full graph. So a tree is a subgraph of your full graph, and, and a spanning tree, so which has no cycles, and a spanning tree is a subgraph, uh, which contains all of the vertices. Okay, so you can imagine that this is really useful in uh, real life applications when we're trying to connect a network up. It might be that we're trying to connect towns with internet access, for example. Um, yeah, something like that. Okay, so here's a couple of examples. They don't have to look the same. Although the, uh, the two algorithms which you're going to use will actually give you the same minimum weight. So we're looking for a minimum spanning tree here, which will have the lowest weight. So, so here are two spanning trees, though, for this graph here. You can see that they look different, but they connect all of the um, vertices and they span. Uh, and there's no loops. There's no uh, cycles involved there. Okay, right, so let's deal with these algorithms. So we've got Kruskal's algorithm in this case, and then we're going to do prims. So Kruskal's, let's take a little copy of this one here. So just, let's just take that, put me over there for a moment. Okay, so we've got this one here. Okay, right. To drag me down to the side again. Okay, so Kruskal's algorithm says find the edge, find the edge of least weight anywhere in the graph. If there are two or more edges with the same weight, any may be chosen. So let's have a look at the graph here. We can see that there is a length of three and a length of three and a length of three. We can choose any of those to start off with. Right, then it says add the edge of least weight that has not already been selected and does not form a cycle with the previous selected edges. So say for example, I choose this one, then after that I could choose this one or I could choose this one. Doesn't matter because I'm choosing the next least weight. Um, we, we happen to have two of the same weight there um, and neither of those forms a cycle. So we could say for example, choose this one. We do not need to connect these things up. They don't need to connect at the moment, but obviously they will need to in the end. In the end, it says, uh, part three, it says, repeat the second stage until all the vertices are connected. Okay, so let's choose the other three there. And then we need to go on to lengths of four. So I don't know, let's choose this length of four. And then let's choose this length of four. And then let's choose this length of four. And now I can't choose this length of four because um, it would create a cycle. So now I need to go on to any other lengths which are higher than that. The next highest length, which is five, but five and five there, both complete cycles. So I'm not going to choose those. So after that, I will choose the six. And at that point, I've connected all of my vertices together. Okay, so um, that's Kruskal's algorithm. Clearly, you're going to need to explain what you're doing to the examiner as well to show how you came up with this. So you can say, um, I added this edge, this edge, this edge in this order. So you can then say at the end, edges were added in the order of, let's say, D, F, and then D, E. I can't remember which order I added them in, but B, H, so all of the threes, and then I chose the fours. It doesn't matter how I write that down. B, C, B, C, C, D, um, and then after that, there were six edges, and we had the H, G after that as well. So this was the order in which we added the edges. So that shows that we've used this algorithm correctly and not a different algorithm. Okay, uh, let's just check that I've answered this. 
uh, I never actually read the question, so perhaps I should do that. It says, uh, use Kruskal's algorithm to find the minimum cost of, the, of connecting all of the houses on the estate. The cost of connecting each pair of houses are shown on the weighted graph. Um, all weights are the costs in 1,000 euros of connecting the houses. So clearly at this stage, we just need to add together all of, the, all of those um, uh, weights. So we've got 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. So it's a 21. And then plus the 6 there as well, so 27. Which means, we obviously need to give that in context, which means that the cost is 27,000 euros in this case. Okay, so that's Kruskal's algorithm, and that's our minimum cost of a uh, network which connects all of the vertices together. Okay, so there we go, Kruskal's algorithm done, pretty straightforward. So uh, there's another algorithm, you can see how they're doing this in the book, they may have done it slightly differently. I, I think here you don't necessarily need to come up with, you see they've, they've come up with one line for the graph and then two and then four, I mean, and then six. I, I mean, they're just trying to explain what's going on here. I don't think you need to show a repeated um, graph. I think it's fine to do what I've done there and say, well, look, here is our graph. And by the way, you probably want to do that separate to the actual diagram that they give you. Um, but here is the graph. Here is how I connected the edges. Here is the order in which I connected the edges and then answer the question. Okay, next bit. So let's shift on. Okay, and the next one is called Prim's algorithm. So let's take this one. And fairly straightforward again, this one. This one says, select any vertex. Select any vertex and add the edge of least weight adjacent to it. Okay, so you can choose any vertex. Perhaps it would be sensible to start at A. Okay, and then add any vertex, uh, at any edge of least weight adjacent to it. So next to that, so it needs to, to join on. In this case, we're making it so that it starts at one place and then spans out. So you never have a disconnected graph here. Um, so part two of this says, add the edge of least weight that is incident to the tree formed in the first step and does not connect to a vertex already in the tree. Okay, so in other words, don't make a cycle, but continue adding the, the length of least weight to that entire network. So anything which is touching that entire network is valid there. Okay. So repeat the process until all vertices have been added. So let's start at A. Let's go across to four. We'll use the four because uh, going across to H because it's the smallest weight. And then the smallest weight connecting H or A is three. And the smallest weight, uh, weighted edge connecting A, H or B is four. The smallest weight connecting a, B, H, or C is the four. Um, and the smallest weight then is uh, at the end. You can see it's the three, so it's connecting to D. So we've got a three here, so we can choose this one, for example. And the smallest weight connecting to all of those um, vertices already incorporated is the three. So that's the only one which actually broke the um, pattern there of going from one to the next to the next. But that was just coincidence. At the end, we don't connect from E, we're connecting from D. We're just looking for the smallest edge, and that could be anywhere, you know, it could have been, um, not the five, because that makes a cycle. It could have been this one, for example. Okay, but in this case, it was this one here. There we go, now we have completed Prim's algorithm in this case. Now it asks us to use Prim's algorithm, in an exam situation, they might just say, use an appropriate algorithm and say what algorithm that you used. Um, in this question, they're saying definitely use Prim's algorithm. Okay, this also gives us a similar answer. So um, we're getting here as well. And, and again, we should say we've added A, H, 
and uh, BH and uh, BC. So we should say the order in which we've added things. And then, of course, we need to answer the question. And of course, that's really simple. That's four plus three plus four plus four plus three plus three, right? And then put it into thousands of euros. Okay. Now let's just have a look to see that they don't do anything different on here. We get the same. Oh. <laughs> hmm. They put in the six as well. What have I done wrong? Uh, I haven't. I haven't met, matched up G. So there we go. I thought there was something wrong there. I thought it wasn't coming to 27,000. I wondered if it was the same question. Right, we haven't matched up. We haven't joined up G, so we haven't finished here. We haven't repeated this process until all vertices have been added. Okay, so um, G hasn't been added, but the next options that we can consider are this, 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 and this. They all um, go to G and connect G. And we can see that the lowest of those numbers is H to G there. If you add them all together, it's actually the same question as before, isn't it? So you should get 27,000 there as well. But importantly, you're going to need to state the order in which you've added uh, the, the uh, edges. Otherwise, the examiner won't know which algorithm you've used. OK, right. So last little bit then. You can also do this little note that says all minimum spanning trees have the same weight but may not consist of exactly the same edges fair enough okay so finally we need to do this using a table so this is prim's algorithm using a table method so okay so you can imagine that if you're writing this as a, a program for a, a computer to to to, to follow the instructions that you may start with a table rather than the graph. I mean, the computer will can deal with the array of data much easily, much e easier than, than the graph itself. So putting into the table is really useful. And then Prim's algorithm is, is, a, is a very simple way of, of going through, um, through this in a, in a uh, computer-based method. Right, okay, so find the minimum spanning tree for the graph represented in the table below. So let's deal with this then. Let's change to pencil here. So let's start at A, and then let's connect to another one of the vertices. So let's connect to E, because we connect to E. That's the smallest of the numbers here. A connecting to E, but now, of course, um, we don't need to connect to A anymore, and we do not do not need to connect to E because they're both in the uh, algorithm. They are both in the, the 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 spanning tree, which the tree which is already created. Okay, so we've gone to E, um, but now we need to look at so we're in A and E. Now remember that we're not just moving on from E. We're looking for the lowest edge which connects to anything which is already in the network. Now, it might be useful to actually draw this down as you go. So we've got A and E are connected with a length of E with a length of 10. Okay, now we're trying to connect to both of those. So I can see the smallest number in both of those rows is 15. So that's to D, so I'm connecting now E to D with a length of 15. You don't need to worry about making the side lengths roughly to scale. That's meant to say 15. D. Okay, so then I'm going to cross this one out because I no longer need to connect to D, but D is in my list of options that I can go from. So now I'm looking down in... Now I'm looking in those three rows there. I've got 40, 45, 15, 20, 30, and 35. So I'm going to go with a 15. So I'm going to connect D to B. Okay, I'm going to just put it over here. Um, and B is 15 again. Okay, so now I no longer need to connect to B, but because B is in the network, I can now can consider all four of these options here. 
to all four of these rows and to look for the lowest number in all four of those rows. So the lowest number to those that connects to C is 20. So that's the lowest number in all four of those rows. So 20, uh, let's just put that over here. You can draw it in lots of different ways, of course. So that's 20. So there's our network in this case, and we are then done. Okay, we don't need to connect back to the start or anything. We're now done with this. Uh, that is our algorithm completed. There is actually an algorithm which is really similar to this later on. So you do need to make sure that there, you'll know the difference between these two things. Um, but, but yeah, this is Prim's algorithm. The important thing is here that we can take any of the numbers which connect to the network. It's not one route, which later on you'll see there's a, you'll do an algorithm which is similar, but you just follow one route. Okay, so there we go, that's done. And find the minimum spanning tree. So it's good to draw it out at the same time. You can see that everything has been covered there. We, we, we no longer need to go further than this. And then of course we can just add together the, the uh, lengths of our, our, our weights basically. So we've got 50, 60 there, so a weight of 60. Okay, let's just check that in the book. Let's see that. Uh, yeah, okay, they, they crossed it off slightly differently. But, and they've drawn the picture slightly differently as well, but they've gone A to E to D to B and then uh, D to C there. They've just drawn it differently. In fact, they've just put D to C separately to the side and I put it through the center. Okay, right, um, that's that. You need some practice. There's 15F. Um, both of those things should be possible in a lesson, I think. And after that, we have the Chinese postman problem. Okay, something to look forward to. Thanks for listening.